Remember, I said there are six things that the thief steals from you. So let me now share the second thing that the thief steals. He steals your security. The security position you have in God through Christ Jesus. He steals your security in a number of ways. One, by making you believe that you have to work, that you have to work hard to maintain your relationship with God. See, we don't have to do anything, absolutely nothing. You don't have to do anything except to believe in Jesus Christ, to maintain our relationship with God. So some of you have never heard this before. Ultimately, it is God's responsibility, not ours, God's responsibility to maintain the relationship between him and I, between you and him. Not your, relation, not your responsibility, nor is it mine. And God took care of it already through Jesus Christ. See, the thief steals your security with a doctrine of doubt. He causes you to doubt your salvation. To doubt you receive a human spirit, a new human spirit. And to doubt you were given a new heart when you were risen with Christ. You are capable for the first time to be totally, totally obedient from the heart as the Holy Spirit has inscribed God's desire in our new heart. The thief steals your security by working with your pastors and your ministry leaders, you know, those who fail to embrace the fullness of Christ's work on the cross. He uses them to convince you through their messages that there are willful sins that you will keep that will keep you from inherit from your inheritance in God. The thief steals your security in Christ by making you panic at the idea that your salvation is in jeopardy or hanging in the balance. What he does is he reminds you continuously of the many sins you've committed, especially the reoccurring sins. You know, those sins that continuously, continually trip you up. He steals your security by making you believe that some of our sins or some of your sins weigh heavier or are worse than others. The thief wants you to believe that your sins, whether big or small, are accumulated in successions, which causes you to lose connection with the Holy Spirit. The thief plants in your mind thoughts about your past sins. Then he shifts the focus away from your past sins and towards the hypothetical of what you might do in the future. You'll start asking questions such as, what if I despair and commit suicide? What if my marriage ends in a divorce? Those of you who are married. And what if I begin to doubt my faith? By reminding you daily of your sins, the thief heaps more guilt on you. And then you begin to feel distant and dirty. You begin to pray to be resaved. So that you can feel confident once again in God. Focusing on your sins causes you to reject the truth of the word of God. And the work that was completed on the cross. He blinds you. And he steals your security. So that you will not focus on and realize that all, every last one of our sins has been taken away. Once and for all. We are forgiven forever. You don't know that? Well, now you do. Again, you find yourself consumed with your sins instead of consumed with the promise of God. The promise made between God and himself to keep you for all eternity. As long as you remain de devoted to some sort of remembering and measuring your sins, you will not see the work that Jesus completed on the cross and you will miss out on the numerous reasons, the numerous reasons to celebrate your security in God.
Ephesians 1 and 7. This is the New Living Translation. It says, he is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. We are forgiven forever.